A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Let the wilderness and the dry land exult. Let the waste and rejoice and bloom. Let it bring forth flowers like the jonquil. Let it rejoice and sing for joy. The glory of Lebanon is bestowed on it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen all weary hands, steady all trembling knees, and say to all faint hearts, courage, do not be afraid. Look, your God is coming, vengeance is coming, the retribution of God, he is coming to save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unsealed. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongues of the dumb sing for joy. For water gushes in the desert, streams in the wasteland. <coughs> the scorched earth becomes a lake, the parched land springs of water. <coughs> the lairs where the jackals used to live become thickets of reed and papyrus. And through it will run a highway undefiled, which shall be called the sacred way. The unclean may not travel by it, nor fools stray along it. No lion will be there, no any fierce beast roam about it, but the redeemed will walk there, for those the Lord has ransomed shall return. They will come to Zion shouting for joy, everlasting joy on their faces. Joy and gladness will go with them, and sorrow and lament be ended. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Look, our God is coming to save us. Look, Look our, our God, God is, is coming, coming to, to save, save us. us. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace. Peace for his people. His help is near for those who fear him and his glory will dwell in our land. Look, Look our, our Lord is coming, is coming to, to save us. Mary and faithfulness have met, um, sorry, mercy and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Look, Look our, our God Lord is, is coming, coming to, to save, save us. us. The Lord will make us prosper, and our earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march before him, and peace shall follow his steps. Look, Look our God Lord is coming Lord. to save us. Alleluia, ah, alleluia, alleluia. Prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight, and all mankind shall see the salvation of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus was teaching one day, and among the audience there were Pharisees and doctors of the law who had come from every village in Galilee, from Judea, and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was behind his works of healing. Then some men appeared, carrying on a bed a paralysed man whom they were trying to bring in and lay down in front of him. But as the crowd made it impossible to find a way of getting him in, they went up onto the flat roof and lured him and his stretcher down through the tiles into the middle of the gathering, in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, he said, My friend, your sins are forgiven. The scribes and the Pharisees began to think this over. Who is this man talking blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But Jesus, aware of their thoughts, made them this reply. What are these thoughts in your hearts? Which of these is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk? But to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins... He said to the paralyzed man, I ordered you to get up, pick up your stretcher, and go home. And immediately before their very eyes, he got up, picked up what he had been lying on, 
and went home, praising God. They were all astounded and praised God, and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen strange things today. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first reading, Isaiah presents us with a wilderness. He recounts it as a, wild, as a real wilderness, but at this season of Advent, it is our personal wilderness out of which we must climb for the coming of Christ on earth. But we should look at this passage as a prophecy not of the birth of Jesus on earth, but as a prophecy of his second coming. Wilderness had many meanings for Israel, it's a place of flight and freedom. It's populated by deadly animals. Water is scarce and crops do not grow. And it is easy to get lost. But the wilderness is where God's people learn to trust him. In the wilderness, God carried them, fed them and gave them water. In the wilderness, God found his people, guarded and cared for them and lifted them up. Isaiah's prophecy is that this wilderness will be transformed. Let the wilderness and dry lands exult. Let the wasteland rejoice. This dry earth will be given glory and splendor, visible evidence of fruitfulness and abundance, even as God's own glory and splendor, the visible evidence of divine sovereign power, are revealed. And the God whose glory they will see is our God. Now, Isaiah tells his audience, you and me, to buck up and climb out of spiritual lethargy. The prophet shows us a pair of hands that have grown weak, soft and slack from disuse. They can hold nothing and no longer do the work they were made for. He directs us to strengthen them. The prophet shows us a pair of knees that give way to staggering and stumbling. Well, who can walk like this? He directs us to make them firm. The prophet shows us people whose hearts are faint and gripped by anxiety. Courage, exhorts Isaiah, do not be afraid. And the prophet gives a reason, drawing attention to the one source of strength and salvation. If you open your eyes and look, you will see your God approaching. God's arrival transforms every inability into ability and every lack into a miraculous abundance. God's coming brings the capacity to see and hear to those whose senses are starving for light and sound. Nerves heal and grow and send and receive signals. Atrophied muscles grow strong. The man who could not walk will have strength in his legs to walk, but he won't walk, he will jump. The man who couldn't or wouldn't speak will find himself able to talk, but he won't talk, he will shout, he will sing, he will praise God at the top of his lungs. Now we know from the Gospel today that Christ achieved this, these things for a limited number of people in the Holy Land 2,000 years ago. We know full well that all these things are not going to be achieved on the 25th of December. So let us look at the prophecy in the expectation of Christ's second coming and it falls into place. Isaiah takes us back to the wilderness running with water using language that evokes themes of creation, redemption, and provision. The parched desert becomes marsh. But this flooded wetland is not the home for God's people. It is the root home to God. There, in the place that once was wilderness, once a place of wandering, will be a raised road. There will be no more wandering and no more danger. The people God has redeemed and ransomed will walk on it, and they will turn, and they will come home. Rejoicing and gladness will meet them on the road. Sorrow and sighing will fill, will flee. Isaiah chapter 35 invites us to reflect in this Advent season, not only on God's coming in Christ, but also as our coming home at his second coming. God approaches us. God is here. We are to rejoice. And in Advent, 
we seek to reciprocate God's love for us.